strategy, sure. data, and culture. You need the strategy first. What are you trying to achieve? Your data, I, I'm listening to what everyone's saying, and I, I, I work in the SME space, but primarily in the big end of town, right? So the, 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 very, the very large clients is my principal focus. Data is a problem. The quality and the veracity of data is a problem. And, you know, we talk about hallucination. Well, I'll challenge that statement. It's not really hallucinating. It's giving you a response based, based on the code line, right? It's it's not really hallucinating if you, if you look at it technologically. And, and look at that so strategy, culture, and data. So what are you trying to achieve? Is the culture, is the organization, digital transformation, is, is it able to actually step up and consume it? And then you're going to unleash your technology. I tell clients when they go from, say, ECC to S4 HANA, if your data is not in order, all you're going to do is go from bad decision making to really fast bad decision making. And AI is no different. Your, your data veracity determines your, your outlook. I mean, just look at some of the stories you see already around Canada Air, where um, yeah. the AI went and wrote another, another uh, policy. So that may be humorous, but uh, you know that that poses some serious challenges to enterprises. You want to unleash this thing in the world, and in a productive state, and, and quite often customer facing. You better be ready for the response, and that response is predicated on the quality of your data. Yeah, I mean uh, the the one point that, that really talks to me in there is is the fast of the data. Like we're moving faster than we ever have, and and we have the technology, and this technology is innovative, but it's also pushing faster. And even though that, you know, in your three criteria that you mentioned, you know, first being strategy, I'm actually leaning sometimes in regards to companies is sometimes our cultures are wrong because when, when you have a company, I mean, we have, you have individuals here in the manufacturing space and other spaces all around the world. And I can think, I, I can imagine if we ask, like, is culture an issue that you see, you know, predominantly when you're talking to different businesses and even in, you know, other businesses? Massive. Yeah, I, I, I like that Iron Man, uh, that scene from the Iron Man movie when he's pushing the rotor blade, but eventually the rotor blade catches up with him and starts pushing him. I think that's a, that's right. a, that's a really good way I try and illustrate to clients, be careful what you wish for, because pretty soon the blade's not only going to catch up, it's going to start pushing you. Right. And if you're focusing on strategy, but then your company or the people that are working in the company aren't ready, like that, as a, again, like it's going to catch up to you faster than you realize. And that, I think that's that's part of it. So so definitely, is there any other things that anybody would want to mention about what to prepare yeah. for in this this new coming world? Can I, I, can I, I just wanted to mention, just like with any other you know new thing that you're trying to implement, the, the cost and the ROI should also be a top of mind. Or any business who wants to do this certainly you know everybody's representing ai as the holy grail and it's going to solve all kinds of problems but um you know first of all there's maybe some simple processes or workflows that don't necessarily need ai because you can solve for it with you know basic type of uh, decisioning and then there's a cost right we know that there is you know token cost all of that with gen ai but there's going to be a cost associated with all of this automation and capability. So you got to take the good with the bad and do that ROI for every case to see if it yeah. makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And on the automation side, I can tell you, we always, we know the cost, but on the gen AI side, it's kind of nebulous at the moment. And so there's yeah. some, there's some worry there, but Paul, did you want to add something there? I think you, you were saying. I kind of wanted to hit in with, and it's, it's a kind of a almost three way question. Tori, you said something about your PC systems will change. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of go against that because I think the functionality in the European systems are there, are thereabouts. They'll mature a bit more because you're still doing your MRP and your sales and your manufacturing, your production planning and whatever. But the touch screen and, and the, the benefits you get out of it, yes. Uh, Shaheen, uh, where you said it might take longer with SMBs to get because of the data issue, uh, I think that some of the largest organizations I've dealt with, their data is in a real uh, mess, even bigger mess than some of the smaller companies. The smaller companies sometimes think that they're worse, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, a good point. So I, but yeah, Arturo, you go ahead and I'll, and I'll no, talk I was, I was going to un unpack that a little bit. With, yeah, what I was going to say is, you know, when and, and when I say the ERP is going to change, I think right now ERP is is an extremely powerful piece of software um it is highly it is very difficult to know what you're doing it, it right it's not like a like any b2c 
uh, kind of software where you just jump in and you can kind of figure out what you're doing, it, you have to know, right? You have to get trained. You have to understand the workflows. You have to understand everything that happens. And it's not super intuitive. I think what's going to happen is with, with particularly generative AI, again, with large language models, is it's going to allow, it's going to kind of lower that bar, right? Where maybe you had to have highly trained people interacting with it. Now, all of a sudden, it's going to be so simple that even a child could interact with it. So I think that's the kind of things that we're going to see. And if anything, it's going to make ERP that much more valuable in, in, my, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think what Paul was kind of leading to there was talking, you know, and again, to Shaheen's point, small and medium sized business are going to have an easier time in doing this. I'm doing this on the enterprise side and it and the enterprises I've talked to outside of my own, you know, it's it's rough because the data, because the filtering, because the labeling of the data and, and what's the nuance around that data. And then if are you governing it correctly or building the governance in? So your small and medium companies, you know, when, when you hear in the news that the next big billion dollar company is going to be some small business, there's a really good chance of that because of this, this barrier to entry is lowered. I think Paul, uh, you're saying the, 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 there's, there's the other side of the coin, right? There's always FMA, first movers advantage. You, you look at Microsoft announced a partnership with Open AI, $100 billion DC, and, and we all know that that's just going to be an AI farm, right? Um, I, 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 I'm scared to sit uh, somewhere up in a space station and switch the lights off and, and see the thermal signature of that farm, but. <laughs> Um, just just have a think about the amount of data that those kind of corporates um, or that capability can hoover up versus a small uh, business. And I, I would say, I, I agree with you, you know, you, you're making life easier for an SME, but it's also creating a larger disparity because those with that kind of economic muscle can hoover up larger data sets and make maneuvering changes that are on a scale that, that bigger belief. The little guys, uh, they stand a good chance of just being run right over. That's just a perspective I have. I'd love to hear uh, other views. Yeah, yeah. run over I, acquired, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think scale is important, is that is that when we look at the scope of AI and what people have tried to do, oftentimes, um, if you pick asset management, the GEs and the the Pratt Whitney's can invest tons of money into predictive maintenance for jet engines because they're very critical, they're very expensive, and we all want them to stay in the air. I mean, you know, it's it's you know, so the the ROI is easy. If I go to a manufacturer of dog food bags and he has one printer that his whole business is dependent on the only data set he has is a little bit he doesn't have data set from all the other printers that have ever built he doesn't have data sets that you know and he doesn't have a data scientist if he you know is that you know do you ever go to a small business and say well who's your data scientist if they have one he works in finance um you know and mm -hmm. he doesn't work for the core piece of the business so that that's a that's a cultural worry I have about the small and medium business really grabbing these tools in their current form. And I think they will evolve. I mean, uh, the democratization of this technology is really what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And Glenn, I, I agree. And I think it's that's the role that we have, or at least for my company, the, the role that we play as the trusted partner uh, for these small, medium sized businesses that are not necessarily tech savvy to enable them with these capabilities to aggregate the data, bring in data from third party sources that would allow them to use the automation and take advantage of AI. And that's the way we view it. Uh, so I have to disagree a little bit with Paul because there's always gonna be a need for entrepreneurial, small, medium sized businesses. That's what this right. country is built upon. So, you know, the small lumber yard or the small, you know, uh, builder, home builder is not going away. There's always a need for them for the services they offer. It's just that are they going to be able to do it as efficiently as a big kahuna uh, in the market? And I think the technology vendors like us are going to make sure that they are going to be able to compete. Right. And I think, so, Shaheen, well, if, if I may real quick, Shaheen, because yeah. I, I strongly agree with what you're saying, because I think a, a lot of these customers, what they're right, these manufacturers, they don't have time to start, you know, <laughs> implementing AI, right? It's a big reason why they moved from, a lot of them are moving from on-prem to the cloud, right? Which is not having to manage the hardware. It's the same thing, right? Like 
now I have to manage AI. They, they just, you know, don't have that kind of time. So they'll look for, for uh, us, like the vendors, right, to, to, to solve that for them. And so that, and that question, which is this, right, will AI pose a threat to ERP? I think the answer is no. I think ERP is, is going to become the vehicle, uh, one of the vehicles, right, for, for AI adoption for a lot of these companies. 